Hello, this is Marcus from CyberDog. Today I want to make a review video of our uh, multimeter with the temperature sensor K-type temperature sensor control. Alright, so first you turn it on when you purchase it from CyberDogLLC.com. You have all the traditional multimeter functions. You have some ohmmeter, the measure resistance. You have the voltage to uh, measure the voltage. And then you have the ampere, and you have the frequency here that hertz. Uh, I guess it all measure the oscillation. I never know how to use it. Uh, what I like the most about this multimeter is aside from being very accurate with the ohm and the voltage and the ampere section, is that it has a temperature control. It can measure temperature. Um, I'm not. You can look out, check out our website for specific specs, but what I use is within the range of one, uh, 50 degrees Celsius to uh, 400, even 500 degrees Celsius, and no problem with that. I'm pretty sure this can measure up to a thousand, don't quote me on that, uh, maybe 100 degrees Celsius, but that's way beyond the usage of uh, SMD soldering and rework. So right now, my body temperature, I'm holding this uh, thermal coupler. Uh, right now, my temperature is at 35 degrees Celsius. How this work is that it has a unique alloy that's being uh, welded onto this uh, two wires. And when I touch it with my finger, my body temperature is increasing the re resistance of this little dot over here. Hence, um, the changing resistance they can pick up through the computer chip inside it tells you what's the change of temperature that's being applied onto this uh, end of the thermocouple. Okay, very good. So uh, what do I use this for? Uh, let me turn on my soldering iron and show you. So as you can see, this is a, one of the really cheap Chinese uh, made soldering station. The calibration is way off. Um, I set it to 400 degrees Celsius because in reality this is only gives out 200 something degrees Celsius so this is terrible calibration. In order to really do good work on reworks you need to know your solder into temperature at a precise level um, that this multimedia can provide you. Uh, this rework station is just very disappointing at the calibration. It's like 430 degrees Celsius supposedly, but right now it's um, the true temperature is really 180 as you can see from the multimeter. So uh, your leather solder will melt at 183 degrees Celsius. So now now the soldering iron is good enough to melt leather solder. Uh, but for lead free solder, especially the modern kind uh, that the manufacturer like you use, you need temperature higher than 233 degrees Celsius to even begin to melt the solder. So you will need a little bit higher than that. So right now I'm waiting for my soldering iron to be, especially at the tip area, it needs to be um, above. Sorry, this iron is also very annoying um, that you have to constantly tighten it. It gets loose on its own because of the heating and cooling cycle. So yeah, this is not something I would prefer, but it's just cheap and I have it, so that's why I'm using it. Alright. Personally, I think Haiku makes a better sorting iron. This, this is just poorly made in China. I, I also, a, second, a little bit tangent while we're waiting the sorting iron to heat up. This suction thing for smoke doesn't really work all that well, so I retract it all the way back. It was just getting in the way, makes something very difficult. Um, I have a air, air uh, smoke sucker that purifies the air, so I don't need to worry about smoke in that regard. Anyway, so now the tip temperature is finally at two hundred and. One. It's not even 230. Oh, now it's 230 degrees Celsius. So this is good enough to solder. This is hot enough to solder leather-free solder. And while the real station still shows 430 degrees Celsius, which is off by 200 degrees, as you can imagine. Don't even bother looking at that number. It's really just a suggestion. It's not true temperature. What you need is a good thermal coupler and something like this to measure the true temperature of your soldering tip. 
That's why sometimes when you put on your uh, rework station at 300 degrees Celsius and you can't get anything to melt, you can't get any solder to work, it's because they, they were made really cheaply and just pretty much junk on the reading. So that's why you have a hot iron solder. It's not because the soldering iron sucks, it's just because, well, the soldering iron station sucked. Okay. So that's how you use a soldering iron. Um, you can use that to, you know, heat up things at the temperature that you preset. Or you can use the thermocoupler again. The soldering, I'm going to show you how to do soldering. Let's see, let's do the, this is a 3GS board. So I'm going to do a desoldering of the 109 IC. I don't know if this one is being tempered with yet, but let's try. Again, you have the measurement here from the um, rework station. Don't even bother looking at it. It's really giving you a suggestion of the temperature. It's not a true accurate temperature. In order to get a true accurate temperature, you need to have a thermocoupler like this. So this is the 109 IC. You heat it up. First, you apply some flux. I'm using the CyberDoc IMA flux, no clean. Okay. Put it here, and you place the thermocoupler above the IC. This way, you can see the temperature on it. Um, this will melt. I in my exp uh, previous experiment uh, experience is that it will melt at three hundred and fifty degrees Celsius. If you can maintain that temperature for any IC, pretty much. For long enough time with preheating from the bag, which I'm not doing right now, you can remove it. Um, basically, using this, you want to know like when the temperature is reached, so you can actually remove the chip. So, uh, try it. all right, so we can we can use a little bit more heat. Another good way to increase you can increase the uh, heat speed, heating speed. So let's see what temperature is at now. Okay, so that was pretty easy. You can remove it that way. Very good. You can you can pretty much remove any parts using this method. You use the thermocoupler, find out the temperature, and using a hot air gun to remove it. See, this was the uh, 109 IC that was removed. This is the backlight IC for three years. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I could remove more parts, but you get the point. Um, you put the demo coupler on top and use a hot air gun or infrared, infrared dark field. Dark field infrared just means that it doesn't emit light. It's a ceramic hitting element on top, so you can measure the temperature. That way you can control what you need to use on the circuit board. Okay, thank you for watching. Again, you can purchase this uh, multimeter with the thermal coupler control on cyberdocklc.com. And also, after you finish, remember to turn off this multimeter because this is a good quality multimeter. It has an on or button. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time in our other product reviews.